As you can see, jQuery has a lot of different ways to traverse and filter the DOM. There are numerous functions here, many of which do similar things, and we'll find that in this video it's pretty easy to combine a couple of these to accomplish a lot of work in a fairly short amount of code. So let's just dive in and do that. We're going to start again with a blank document as shown here, and I'm just going to copy and paste some HTML in here real quick so that you don't have to watch me type it. First thing I'm going to do is put some checkboxes of different fruit choices, and we're going to be using jQuery to traverse these checkboxes. So I've got five of them right here, apples, bananas, orange, pear, and watermelon. Okay, so now I'm going to ask the user which of these they like. Finally, I'm going to put one more div tag in here to output the results of what they've checked. Now, you'll notice that this output tag has an, a class on it of line break items. And the reason is that when the user checks one of these checkboxes up here, we'll be displaying each selected item on a different line inside this output div tag. And adding a class of line break items will automatically format each item onto a different line. And we'll see how that works very shortly. All right, so now to get this to work, the first thing we want to do is capture an event where those checkboxes are checked. Let's see what this page looks like right now to get an idea of this starting point. So we've got these different checkboxes asking which fruits the user likes. But when checked, obviously nothing's happening because we haven't rigged up any events yet. So as mentioned, the first thing we're going to do is rig up an event to capture when the checkbox has been checked. And there's a very concise way to do that using a jQuery selector. This is a type selector. So if we just did this right here, this would give us all the tags that have a type attribute. But in case there were more form elements on this page, we want to filter this down so that it selects only checkbox. So we can type in type equals checkbox, and that'll give us only checkbox items. And then we want to wire up to the change event of the checkbox, meaning when it's checked or unchecked, this event here will fire off. Give that an anonymous function. There. So now when a checkbox is checked, this event will fire. And we'll just verify that real quickly with an alert that says changed. All right, so now someone selects a checkbox and we're notified that the changed event has fired up. And it seems to fire once for a checkbox being clicked or unclicked. Okay, good. Now, let's figure out a good way to output the items that they've selected. First thing we'll do is we'll specify the ID of the output tag here. And one really fast way to do this is to use the append function because the append function can receive a collection of objects. For example, I could just get the entire collection of checkboxes that are checked. And there's a selector available in jQuery called checked, which will give you precisely that. It'll give us all of the items that have been checked on the entire page. Well, here, since we only have checkboxes on the page, even though that's a very broad selector, it'll work. Let's see what happens. Okay, so now I'm going to check bananas. And oops, what happened? It seemed like this element got moved down. Same with orange. That seems weird. Well, we view the output in the Chrome Developer Tools. We'll see 
that the checkbox actually got removed from this div tag up here and inserted down here in the output. It's not really what we were going for. The reason is that we're actually appending the original checkbox element to the output tag down here. And furthermore, it's taking the checkbox itself and not these labels that are to the right of the checkbox. We want those. Well, there's another function in jQuery called next, which will give us the element that is adjacent to the one that's selected. So if we're getting all the checkboxes that are checked, in our previous example that was bananas, using the next function will give us those labels next to bananas, checkbox, the span tags. Let's take a look at that. Okay, now the bananas label and the orange label is showing up down there. But this thing's still behaving kind of weirdly. We don't want the labels being moved around, nor do we want the checkboxes to be moved around. So instead of moving the label, we want to just make a copy of the label and copy it down into this output div tag. A really simple way we can do that is with the clone function. So now what this says is, first, give me all the checkboxes that are checked. Second, give me the tag immediately adjacent or next to those checked items. And finally, give me a copy of whatever that next item is and insert it into the output tag. Let's see how this runs. That's better. But every time I check something, it's making copies. And that's kind of confusing to look at. Same with unchecking. Well, this problem is a little bit easier to solve. We're using the append function, which doesn't overwrite the contents of the output tag, but appends to it. So maybe what we should do is, each time this change function is called right here, we should first zero out whatever is inside of that output tag. We've already seen in previous videos how easy it is to do that. We can just call the output selector and then call the HTML function on top of that. There. That'll zero out whatever's in the tag already. Oh, now it's really starting to come together. When I check items, they appear, and when I uncheck them, they also appear. That's great. One thing we could do is add a label just above the span tags that are showing up here based on the items that have been selected. We can also consolidate this code a little bit. Remember, certain methods can be stacked on top of each other because they return a reference to the same exact tag that we're interested in applying other things to. A simpler way of saying that is to call the HTML method on that output tag first and zero out its value. Better yet, we'll give it a label that says you appear to like the following fruits. So now when a checkbox has been checked or unchecked, the first thing that happens is the content of the output tag is zeroed out and replaced with the label you appear to like the following fruits. Then the item next to any of those checked items is selected, copied, and appended to that output tag. Let's take a look at the finished script in action. You appear to like the following. And it keeps appending to that nicely. There, 
we've accomplished a fair amount of functionality with a single function call and one line of code. Pretty good. 